Hi, Gil from Testing Gil here. And today I want to talk about test planning, especially top level planning. This is in continuation to this video about test planning in general. I suggest watching it first. Anyway, long story short, we need a plan. We don't want to waste a lot of time on it, but we need something that everyone agrees on and we can start actually working. We don't want everyone running around in many directions, not completing anything. And when things change, we don't want to lose our way. We can create very big plans in different resolutions with different kind of details to support this. It also depends on how long we're planning for. It could be for a full release, like a quarterly thing, or maybe a sprint, like a one week or two week thing. The idea of a top level plan is it's like a manifest or a declaration of guidelines. And it can work in any resolution. The cool thing is that if we use it also for very short releases like a sprint, it's like a five minute work. The planning ends where everyone agrees on the topics. And the first topic that we want to discuss is the content, what we're actually going to do. We can go into details about workflows and features and capabilities, but by now you're probably thinking, how hard does it have to be? We have five features, we want all of them tested. And we want everything that worked until now to continue to work. Easy, end of discussion. Well, that's a nice wish list. But if you want a more realistic plan, you have to work harder. Time will run out eventually, as it always does. And we'll always be left with things that we plan to do, but couldn't. So instead of hoping we can do everything, we need to define the important stuff that we need to do first. I know, it seems obvious. Let's say you have enough time, you think, for testing these five new features. But you don't have a good automated regression suite. So you'll need to choose what to focus on from both the new features and the old stuff. OK, so let's say you do have a good automation regression suite. It's still not giving you full coverage. And you may be able to cover the new features manually, but you will not have time to wrap them with automated tests. You will always need to choose and prioritize because eventually time will run out. There are going to be bugs and repeated tests, and we need to accept that we won't get to everything. Once we accept that, we can prioritize. Prioritization is critical because if we can't get everything done, what we at least should be able to do is complete the important tasks. So let's talk about prioritization. Everything is in high priority is not an acceptable answer. It doesn't even sound serious. Some workflows are more important than others. It's the product manager's job to prioritize, tell us what's important, and it's part of their job. Everyone needs to know what to do first before moving to the next items. And that includes breaking down and prioritizing different scenarios and workflows within features. Suppose you have software that deals with documents and you're adding a new type of document. That's the new features. These documents come with different scenarios that we would like to test. If we don't have time, we'd rather focus on the creation of the new type of document and test that, rather than focus our testing on the deleting of these documents. Whole big features are hard to cover, but when you break them down into different scenarios, you can compare these scenarios and tell which ones are more important than the others. Remember, everyone should agree on the scenarios and the priorities. Once there's an agreement, we have a beginning of a plan. But we're not there yet. I'd like to introduce the musts. We agreed on what to tackle, but within this list, we have scenarios that must work, and some of them can work OK or not at all. The musts tell us where the, we put the quality bar. We need to specify from the new features and scenarios what must work now, and from the old scenarios, what must not break. And if that's not enough, we need to specify what actually works means. For example, creating a document is important. We already agreed on that. But in a new version, we have a new API that supports adding and creating this type of document with a few more fields than we had in the old version of the API. We still want both APIs, the old and the new, to work. They must work. The must here is that the new type of document must work, and the old version of the API 
must continue to work. And we can also specify that both are working when they store the same information in the same schema, the new one. Since we've already agreed that scenarios of deleting documents is not as important, there are no musts here. The must acts as a pass or fail criteria for release. That means that the product cannot be released if they are not working. It may be tempting to skip this step. But shining the light on what must work keeps our attention as we're testing and even developing on continuing to have this quality of a release criteria. We're making sure that the quality that we agreed on is continue to be met. It may also be tempting to say that everything is a must. But this is kind of missing the point. If the musts are an agreed quality bar, and later we lower the bar because we run out of time, then this quality or acceptance criteria doesn't have any meaning. If we use fewer musts, they have meaning, and everyone agrees that the product cannot be released without them. Thinking and stating and prioritizing what must work in what order, it's a bit of work. But it creates the guidelines for the next release, regardless of size. Everyone agrees on what's important, what works looks like, and what can be done in order to release it. That's not all, folks, but it is for today. We'll continue talking about the top-level test planning in the next videos. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and go watch other videos on this channel. And in the comments down below, tell me about how miscommunication about what really is important and how it should work worked in your teams for hilarious results. Until next time, bye-bye.